Hello and welcome back to Genesis Designs and Model Craft and today I have a quick look review of this new Airfix 48 scale Seeking which arguably yes I am a little bit late to the party on this one um, as some of you will be aware I was I was invited to the rele release event but was unable to go so I missed out on grabbing a kit then um, but I have one here now courtesy of a friend um, Mr. Matt Angel, he runs a, a modelling channel on Instagram called Matt's Modelling Den and he just lives over the road from me uh, he, and he's picked this up um, and immediately contacted me to see if I'd like to borrow it to do a review uh, so obviously I am and here it is um, so here we go, standard Airfix Fair, big sturdy corrugated box Genesis box review time um, but let's not linger on the box let's look at what we get inside as you can see hopefully it's really it's pretty stuff with plastic so I'm going to put it over to the side and we'll get these bags out one by one so let's start proceedings with sprue A then as you can see uh, Airfix have adopted the Bandai style of the big stencil cutouts of the sprue names which is something I am a big big fan of especially when you have a lot of sprues it's far easier to find them with this type of labeling than it is when it's just embossed much much easier and um, you could be forgiven for thinking we have got some rather odd looking fuse large halves here but of course they are not these are actually the sort of shells for the internal detail which centers on this large floor piece which has a lot of detail raised um, fastening detail all over the place it's, it's very very nice indeed and lots and lots and lots of location points for all sorts of things plus tie down rings uh, we've got some pseudo fabric effect on this um, sort of bulkhead it's, it's not a solid bulkhead but just at the back of the sort of cargo area if you like so just where the fuselage turns into the tail boom you've got this sort of blanking off area but this is um, fabric and I think it's got zippers or something so you can go through there to perform maintenance activities it's a piece that looks like uh, the infill for the top, the spine on the inside that is doors so we've got here, this is a sliding door this is the sort of so say crew door and this is like a Land Rover it splits top and bottom so you can see there's an open option here across these parts complete with the steps or a closed option in one piece which is nice selection of wheels none of which are weighted and then a, one of the bulkheads if I just flip this over no detail on the back of that bulkhead I think of no and you can see on the underside of this cargo bay floor there are all kinds of markings and drill holes and things which I do expect will be thoroughly covered in the instructions now this kit is another one of Chris Parker Joy's creations like the 24th scale Spitfire um, and they used the the aircraft, aircraft on which the schemes for this are based they used down in Somerset for reference and everything so I do expect this to be pretty much accurate plus don't forget Several years back now, Be Gone Fly, uh, Airfix did release the Seeking in 72nd, you may recall, and that kit was absolutely glorious. So I'd imagine that a certain amount of information was already to hand. So, what we've we got here a step arrangement, fuselage half seats. Nice effort, actually, at these seats. So very similar to C130 seats, they're foldable canvas with sort of aluminium frames. That is quite a nice go at those and you've got a load of parts for the intakes um, so this kit enables you to build this aircraft in several different phases of its career um, so all of the different options of intake needed to be represented and you can see some of that here although not all of it now a fixing scientist gla glasses to look closely at this rivet detail that everybody's so excited about. Um, 
I do understand where people are coming from with the argument that the Sea King, like most helicopters, actually, is festooned with raised rivets or mushroom head rivets or dome head rivets, however you want to call it. They are not flush riveted airframes. And that's because they don't go very fast, so there's minimal, minimal gain to be had from using aerodynamically smooth riveting. Uh, and it's much easier to produce something with mushroom head rivets, so that's why they do it. And Airfix have chosen to reproduce this with what 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 is more commonly held as as the way to reproduce flush riveting, which is these small dimples. And there has been a certain amount of um, criticism of this online in various places. Um, what else have they done? They've also reproduced overlapping panel work really rather beautifully. All of these panels are stepped, lapped. And that's all been reproduced here. I don't know if it's actually visible or not, but it has been, and it's very, very nicely done. And the doublers um, and reinforcement patches like here, these are beautifully done, very, very fine. They need to be there. They're there on the real thing and quite often get horribly overdone. Almost in an effort to prove that they're there, the kit manufacturers will overdo them, but Airfix have not done this. Likewise, the panelling in the area here, it's all raised, overlapped and disjointed and not smooth and it looks really, really good. I think, myself, looking at this, these rivets look... This area here is definitely better than this area here. I'll come close and hold it still. And I, I hope you can get a feel for the fact that the area where the engine resides, the surface of the, of the kit is smoother. And because of that, the rivets look better. Here, this area, the surface of the kit isn't quite smooth. And um, and that's throwing the eye off when you look at this detail. It's making it look more pronounced than it probably is. And I've got an idea, something I'm, I might do to try and illustrate that in a while. But I have to say, I think this looks really, really good. And as a counter argument to all this talk about how this aircraft has raised rivets, therefore the kit should have raised rivets, I don't disagree in principle. However, I'd like to play devil's advocate and provide a counter argument. So um, let's think about all the Edgewild kits of late, say, shall we? And let things like the Fokker Wolf 190, the Spitfire. Um, the P-51, all of these aircraft were flush riveted and that means exactly what it says. The rivets that held those airframes together were flush with the surface of the panels. So in real life when you look at those air aircraft, yes you can see the rivets but you see them as a circle around the rivet head because the rivet head is countersunk and it's countersunk into the panel to the point where it will sit very very slightly proud but we're talking a couple of thou, that's all. So that if the aircraft is painted and finished perfectly you won't see those rivets at all um, and what you absolutely won't see on a flush riveted aircraft is a lot of little holes 100 percent no way and yet i don't see any of these people complaining about the, the riveting method that edward choose to use on their kits it's equally incorrect arguably more so and then in a further offshoot to that debate there are, the, there are now available um, widespread these 3D decal riveting sets which supply positive riveting for things like the P47 so that you can apply completely spurious mushroom head rivets to your P47 kit which was also a flush riveted aircraft and again I don't see people complaining about this so I don't want to say it's airfix bashing, but I do think it's really missing the point in a fairly big way. What airfix have done is they've provided that visual texture and interest that a kit like this needs because helicopters are very clearly riveted in real life. So for this to be perfectly smooth like the Hasegawa kit was, it would look worse. By doing this, it provides that visual texture to the kit 
without providing a huge load of complication and effort because positive riveting on this scale would be difficult for the modeler to deal with. Fact, it just would be. So personally, I'm in the camp of fair play. They've made an effort and it's decent. It's incorrect, then so are Edward. I'm shrugging right now, I don't know if you can hear that. Anyway, let's get the next bag open and see what we've got in there. All right, this bag has sprues or frames E, F and G. I'm not going to do them in order, but that's what's come out of there. And also, in a separate bag, but within that bag, the transparencies, but we'll look at those at the end. So, firstly with F, since it's on the desk, there's a whole host of things. We have the underside of the fuselage, or the hull, if you like. Technically, it is prob probably referred to as the hull, since this is a nominally water-capable aircraft dealt with in exactly the same as the rest of the fuselage. You've got overlapping panels, you've got some raised fasteners and we've got this recessed style riveting. Just the same as the rest of it. Alternative nose pieces. This will be the spine, you've got a tail rotor there, that's the five blade one. There's another bulkhead there. Radar and a blanking plate just all sorts of detail parts all over it I don't know what most of them are so I'm not going to try and name it all but um, it's all moulded nicely it's slightly clunky but not in an offensive way so you've got a full a full kit for the back part of the helicopter so you've got some radar screens and radio sets and things like that that fit in the back overhead type console stuff for the flight deck and we've got two different instrument panels as I say this kit supports this airframe throughout its life and these are the sort of things that get changed and that's moulded with a lot of relief it's very crisply done and it, it actually looks really really good we do have instrument pan panel decals with the kit but I'd be inclined to punch them out and apply them separately as much as that would take ages. Um, there's all sorts of mechanical looking bits and bobs, details, lots and lots of stuff going on there. This one's a bit more manageable, sprue E. So we've got the sponsons here. These have a touch of uh, sort of oil canning effect panting going on. Not a lot, just a touch, but just enough to look. If you do this in the, the glossy early colour scheme, scheme, it's just enough for that to look quite cool when it's painted. Got another spine, we've got more kit to go in the back. Uh, main undercarriage legs there and the struts for the sponsors. It's a little part of the underside of the nose and another radio the spine one and here's the adapter for it still really nicely moulded I'm not seeing any horrors flash or nasty bits and pieces the sponson is a little bit curious it's got a little infill it's not just two halves there's a little bit more to it than that a little bit going on and that appears to be the very very nose of the Swanson there. <coughs> and the smallest one, Sprue G. We've got some aerials, some more kit for down the back, and we've got various different defensive aid suites fitments here. So the missile warning sensor bumps and lumps, uh, and a turret there. With various areas moulded here and they're all really nicely done with the with the base plates and with the sort of aerofoil section included which I do like to see. I do not know if this is a flur turret or a, a sort of a, a Lurkham style turret. I don't know. And this piece unfortunately has been broken in transit. A whole heap of rotor blades and such. Sprue D. Got another tower rotor, so the six blade version there and all the parts for the main the main rotors and the hubs. These are not 
moulded with any droop on them. That will have to be added by the modeler if required. There's more aerials, steps and bits and pieces, plus we've got the parts for the winch here. If I bring that up a bit closer, have a look at that rotor hub detail. It's pretty decent. Quite a lot of parts going into that by the looks of it. And then the final sprue of plastic parts is B. And again, this is all parts to finish off the fuselage and we've got a load of troop seats as well, a load more troop seats I should say. You can fold the tail boom on this, so you can have folded rotors and folded tail boom, which is, it's a bonus honestly. Um, a 148C King is not a small model, especially with the rotors spread. Uh, it's quite quite a big bit of kit. So yes, we've got parts for the tail rotor, uh, or the fin, the boom, I don't know what helicopterists call these things. And the detail around the mesh areas on here is absolutely exquisite. It's some of the best I've seen on a helicopter model, honestly. It's absolutely beautiful. Love that. Likewise, this top of the gearbox area. It's stunning. Um, more uh, sort of engine and cell covers and more engine area parts. You've got the sort of intake housings and what have you there. The tail plane itself. And some more internal parts as well. It looks a really very detailed kit, I have to say. And as much as I am interested in the kit and in the Seeking, I haven't actually really looked at any of the completed builds in, in any great detail, to be honest. I should perhaps, uh, should perhaps make good on that. So the last one then, let's have a look at these transparencies. Obviously got a lot of windows. Uh, and some lamps. Now, we have two different sort of windscreens if you want the main sort of windscreen and roof part one one with wipers one without are there any other differences nothing that's shouting at me but there may be then you've got separate side panels We'll join on to those and that, that will create the main sort of nose transparencies various windows so you have windows with sort of viewing bubbles and windows without lots and lots of light lenses and over here a couple of Durkham houses modelled in, in clear plastic which is nice so these things It does have a little scar of some description in the moulding. Try and yeah, it's on the outside, just here. But these things are painted. It's only this section here, which is window. And on the real thing, they've got um, like an iridescent coating on them or inside them, so they sort of glint in a purpley goldy sort of way. So that will be a bit of a challenge to replicate if the version you're building has these fitted. Uh, and if it doesn't, these are handy spare parts because most British aircraft at that time had some of these fitted somewhere. British aircraft of this nature. I know the Hercules had them fitted. I think the Chinook did. I, I wouldn't be surprised if things like the Puma did as well. So it's, they're handy things to have. Right then destructions. So we have an A4 booklet in paper, little bit of history on the front and that is a little bit. Airfix would like to thank the following individuals and organisations for their assistance in the development of this model. And they're thanking Historic Helicopters, Heli Operations, Bournemouth Aviation Museum, HMS Sultan, Crispin Morton, Lee Howard, Chris Page MBE, South Yorkshire Aviation Museum, Aerospace Logistics Limited, 
and the Fleet Air Arm Officers Association. A little bit of instructions and there is a list of all the symbols used and what they mean. So, before you start planning, you need to know which scheme you're going to build right from the get-go here. As I suspected, all those markings on the base, on the bottom of the cargo bay floor, pertain to which holes you're going to need to drill, depending which version you build. And as you can see, it's all very clearly marked as to what you do and don't need to drill. And that continues with those big fuselage halves. We've got four different layouts here, for it, one for each of the paint schemes, showing you exactly which holes to drill. And in fact, in the case of the first two schemes, which ones are going to need to fill as well. It even goes down to telling you what size to drill the holes. It's not a case of just guessing which drill bit fits the moulded impression and hoping it's right. it's right. It's telling you exactly what size to drill these holes out to. And again, with the floor or the underside, same deal. Four different diagrams showing you what you need to drill out or fill in, dependent on which version you're going to do. And then, and only then, do we get into the actual build. I'm not going to do a blow by blow, I'll sort of leaf through it, and if anything jumps out at me, I'll, I'll mention it. But this isn't the usual style, the sort of shaded CAD style drawings with the red bits, I think, are supposed to show the previous step, as it were. So, first up, putting that bulkhead up and the equipment racks here, making up some seats. And this is going to continue for a bit because there's really a lot going on on the insides of this thing. Building up the cockpit area, flight deck area. Don't have the whole page in shot, by the way, there are four. <sighs> four boxes per page but the camera's too close a lot a lot a lot of stuff getting built up there's a lot of internal detail on this and at every single step it shows you which version needs this step so be aware of that if you're building version C that you don't need to make any of this stuff Just planning is important I think this is a, a Sonoboy type arrangement and a winch for it. And the versions A and B. A whole load of seats. And then gluing all of this into that cabin. Wowzers. Awful lot going into this. And then the cabin sides, remember those separate sort of half shells. So this whole lot gets built up into a, a sub-assembly which then simply slots. And there is that roof pot. It will be able to just slot into these fuselage halves. So you can build the whole thing as a sub-assembly. And it's not going to get broken when you're trying to add it in. So we're just putting a few sort of little pieces into windows and such into the fuselage parts building up the front face no that's the aft face of the engines here and sticking that onto the top of this internal structure and then finally adding a completed internal structure area into the fuselage half it's ingenious it's quite a rev will do a similar thing with their large cargo aircraft kits got a nice way of doing it. And we're adding the under fuselage stuff. Again taking care of which version we're doing. Building up the intakes and forward nostal areas. Spine and radome, so you got a small attractive radome or a 
larger and less attractive radio. Again, the need to shave off some parts for some versions. We're building up wheel bays which then go into those sponsons. Shows you quite nicely how those goes together. And then now how they fit to the actual aircraft and it's showing you that it's actually meant to be a gap. You've got a nice big sort of easy mode cutouts for these struts to go into which makes me think it makes me hopeful at least that it's something you could paint and finish separately and add to the model at the end because it's really awkward painting around these things when they're fitted actually you can build a model with the under undercarriage retracted should you wish to diagrams here showing you how And likewise with it extended. And you're moving on to the actual tail itself, and as I said earlier, that can be folded or not. <coughs> Transparencies. Okay, it says here is a note windscreen option without the wipers part X9 has been included to allow photo etch wipers to be fitted. These are not included in the kit. Uh, I assume that Airfix may have worked hand in hand with photo manufacturers at some point and be aware that something's coming out for that. I'm really not offended by the moulded in ones personally. Then you've got your intake options again, these are going to vary depending on the uh, version. So we've got a page for A, a page for B, a page for C and a page for D. Moving on further, got the turret there for those that need it, the winch, the crew door with its integral steps, the sliding door, and finally right at the end, fitting that tail and moving on to rotors. There are indeed a lot of parts going into that rotor head. As I said, you can have, you can build the model with the rotors folded or extended. And it does look to me like the connection points where the rotors actually attach to the hub is nice, nice and large and sturdy looking. It's always good with things like this. And there we are. Final view of how she looks one way or the other. So. On to colouring it in and decals. Here's the decal sheet. It's pretty large and comprehensive. As we all know, the FX decal designer does have a fetish for stencils, and you can see that reflected here. Lots and lots of stencils. We've got the various, some of the sort of walkways um, in the kind of areas that are painted where there's where they get dirty. They put these black areas on or these dark areas on um, those are supplied as decals which may or may, you may or may not find easier um, I think airfix decals are great um, they tend to be well researched and accurate they fit the model properly and they work really well they are just really nice decals as I said we've got instrument panel decals there We've got some in other internal decals, radar screens and such, one switched on, one switched off. You've got decals for the road, uh, tower rotor tip colours and also all those stripes that go on the main rotors. And then just all the individual markings, but there are quite a few stencils there. And the schemes we have are as follows. A. So as I said, we're following this single aircraft through through its career. 
probably not all of it, all of the markings that ever held, but we're following it through from the early days. And this is the first one, <coughs> uh, the dark blue scheme, although it appears grey in the in the image. And you can the plethora of stencils is is neatly obvious <laughs> from the the number boxes here. The colours are obviously in in Humbra, which you'd expect. It's calling out 77 matte navy blue for the overall colour and uh, with a note that the overall colour is approximately British Standard 381C number 633 Royal Air Force Blue Grey. Scheme B. <coughs> We've moved to 814 Naval Air Squadron from 826 and this one is just medium sea grey overall. British standard number 637 with some dark sea grey details which is British standard 638. It's not actually it's not actually medium sea grey overall, it's got camouflage grey underneath by the looks of it. It's difficult to pick out in the, um, the drawing, it's very similar colour. Scheme C which is the one I will do. I am going to have to buy one of these kits now I've seen it, which I was, I was worried that would happen. <laughs> uh, I love this scheme. Um, one of the things I used to do when I was younger uh, is surf. I used to surf quite a lot and windsurf. And one of the places that I used to surf, obviously, was Cornwall here in the UK. Cornwall is pretty much a mecca for surfers. And um, I clearly recall being on my surfboard down there, uh, one of the many beaches in the lo in the locale of Newquay, not one of Newquay's actual beaches, but fairly close to the town. Um, and what you'd see twice a day was one of these, come and do a lap around the coastline. And by do a lap around the coastline, I mean do a lap around the coastline at low level, following the line of the cliffs, twisting and turning presumably look it out for anything being wrong with anybody but you'd see them morning and night beetling backwards and forwards and it it, 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 it gave a little bit of a warm fuzzy feeling I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie but I just love the scheme it's it's so cool this is yeah 100% the one I'll do this is 771 Naval Air Squadron called Rose 1995 which coincidentally would have been around about when I was doing surfing down there and finally from 2022, the aircraft as operated by Heli Operations, and this one being a sort of international orange and grey scheme. And curiously, seems to retain the playing card motif on the nose as well. <coughs> but it is really nice to see a manufacturer offering something like this. As one of the scheme options, I think far too often the paint schemes within a kit just just really concentrate on the military aspects of these aircraft. But of course, Sea Kings are operated worldwide in search and rescue and alternative transport operations by civilian companies. So there are a multitude of civilian schemes that one could choose from for the Sea King. Right to revisit this rivet thing, then what I wanted to do. It's just a little quick demo to show how you can't always judge by what you can see when you look at the plastic parts exactly. So what I've done here, obviously I've masked off an area. This section here, I've set, I've flatted this down with a little bit of 800 grade wet and dry used wet. Now, you can see already, possibly, how that looks a lot better because there is this texture in airfix kits this is a thing with airfix kits and it has been for quite a while there's always this little bit of texture and it does make the riveting look a lot worse and softer actually than it is and I've found over time because obviously I've built a lot of airfix kits for FX model world over the years that with the use of either primer or just rubbing the kit down with wet and dry you can take off that slightly sort of mushy surface finish and it just sharpens everything up. Now I'm not going to lie, doing that to this whole kit is, is going to be a lot of work. It's a big it's a big model. 
a lot of surface area and a lot of little details that you would have to sort of sand around really carefully for fear of losing them or softening them too much. But for, this, for the purpose of this, I've just done this area here. So this is flatted, this is not. No primer, no messing about, just literally flatted the plastic down. And I've got some Mr. Paint Extra Dark Sea Grey here. It's a representative colour. It's a representative paint. It's something that a lot of people will use. And I'm going to put a piece of tissue on on my professional filming board. So I've shook this up until there's no random colours in the bottom. I'll just pop a bit in the airbrush. Okay, straight in. Because Mr Paint can be sprayed straight from the jar. I do sometimes thin it down a touch actually, um, even from this, depends what I'm trying to do. But for this demo, it's fine as it comes. Just pop some of that. So, I'm literally just going to spray this square with this Mr. Paint. Okay, there we go. Now, demask. Where's my tweezers gone? Now then, and it's already dry. This is why we use lacquer paints, kids. <laughs> So you've got four squares to look at and I'm going to try and angle this to make it as viewable as possible. So this area has been flatted, this area has not and likewise not flatted, flatted. Can you see the difference? If you can't see the difference change the screen resolution or go get some glasses. I think it's absolutely it's plainly obvious how much more refined this looks than this. And this is how it's designed to look. For some reason, in the in the process of cutting tools, something, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a tool maker or a kit designer, but I do know that this pebbly finish, particularly in this sort of colour and style of plastic that Airfix use, massively visually detracts from the surface detail. And as I said, from experience working with these kits, I know that doing this, that flattening the surface with or without a primer layer gives this look of extra finesse that somehow is is not there if you don't do it. It does make a big, big, big difference to the look of it. Still not correct, I know, but it looks a lot less clumsy. I hope you can see that and I hope that was worth doing for the sake of demonstrating that fact. Um, <coughs> Anyway, I'm going to have to clean this back off now because this isn't even my kit. Um, but no worries, a bit of Mr. Colour Thinner will get rid of that. So there you have it. The new surprise release of the Airfix 148 Seeking. What a little beauty. Um, huge thanks to Matt for lending me this kit. He did not have to do that. It's incredibly generous of him. Uh, he'll probably never lend me another one when he sees that <laughs> I've been painting on his model um, while, it, while it's been away from him. But um, yeah, huge thanks to him for that. Um, I, I think it's lovely. Uh, I was worried about it when he said, do you want to do a review? I thought, no, because I'm going to want to buy one. Uh, and I'm right, I am. I'm going to have to buy one. I do think the Sea King is awesome. I love it. Um, as I related in my little tale about surfing, it's just, it's a, it, it's a great memory. Um, and something I've long held a desire to reproduce in miniature, honestly. So, yeah, we'll be going out and buying one of these. <laughs> uh, and I hope, actually, that a lot of you do as well after looking at this review. Um, I'm not an Airfix fanboy. I have a lot of respect for the people that work there. I know, I know a few, several of them personally. 
I got a lot of time for what they do. They don't always get it right. The um, the recent Vulcan debacle is proof enough for that. But everybody makes mistakes. But what they do is they put a huge amount of time and effort into trying to do the best that they can and for tr and to try and keep that end result at a sensible price point. And they do make an effort to do that. So props to them because this isn't even a stupid price to be fair. Um, I didn't even look up what the cost is. Let me do that now. Okay, quick Google. Cheapest one I can see, £46. Average seems to be about the £50 mark. 49 to £50. I think the retail's 55 so that sounds about right. It's not aggressively expensive, in my opinion. Uh, it certainly isn't more than I'd be willing to pay. And it's actually considerably less than the Hasegawa kit was when it was released, relatively speaking. So I think it's an absolute gem. It looks fantastic, loads of detail, loads of effort has gone into this and it will look awesome on the tables because it's a big imposing model, the Sea King, when it's done in 48th. And I absolutely love the fact that it's possible to pose it with the rotus folded and the tail folded because that adds, to me, that adds another level of visual complication that I just enjoy in a model. So that's just me though but yeah i'm super impressed with it i'm gonna go out and buy one um so yeah i know it's a bit late to the party possibly no new information on this for those of you that have been looking at it but it's my take on it and my take on the whole rivet thing um and, and that's that's it that's all i'll say on that one for now so uh, as usual if you want to support the channel you know where the link is um thanks again to matt incredibly generous thing for him to have done to let me do this uh, and thanks to all of you for watching and for continuing to support the channel and with all of that said it only remains for me to say look after yourselves look after each other and genesis out